Chapter 10, An Explosion. Day after day, the spider waited, head down, for an idea to come to her. Hour by hour, she sat motionless, deep in thought. Having promised Wilbur that she would save her, his life, she was dis determined to keep her promise. Charlotte was naturally patient. She knew from experience that if she waited long enough, a fly would come to her whip. And she sh felt sure that if the, she thought long enough about Wilbur's problem, an idea would come to her mind. Finally, one morning toward the middle of July, the idea came. Why, how perfectly simple, she said to herself. The, uh, the way to save Wilbur's life is to play a trick on Zuckerman. If I can fool a bug, she thought Charlotte, I can surely fool a man. People are not as smart as bugs. Wilbur walked into his yard just as at that moment. What are you thinking about, Charlotte? he asked. I was just thinking, said the spider, that people are very gullible. What does gullible mean? Easy to fool, said Charlotte. That's a mercy, replied Wilbur, and he lay down in the shade of his fence and waited fast asleep. The spider, however, stayed wide awake, gazing affectionately at him and making plans for his future. Summer was half gone. She knew she didn't have much time. That morning, just as Wilbur went, fell asleep, Avery Arable wandered into the Zuckerman's front yard following him by Fern. Avery carried a live frog in his hand. Fern had a cr crown of daisies in her hair. The children fr ran from the, for the kitchen. Just in time for a piece of blueberry pie, said Miss Zuckerman. Look at my frog, said Avery, placing the frog in, on the drain board and holding it out his hand for the pie. Take that thing out of here, said Miss Zuckerman. He's hot, said Vern. He's almost dead, that frog. He is not, said Avery. He lets me scratch him between his eyes. The frog jumped and landed in Zuck Miss Zuckerman's dishpan full of soapy water. You're getting your pie on you, said Fern. Can I look for eggs in the hen house, Aunt Edith? Run outdoors, both of you, and don't bother the hens. It's got getting all over everything, shouted Fern. His pie is all over his front. Come on, frog, cried Avery. He scooped up his frog. The, ki the frog kicked splashy splashing soapy water onto the blueberry pot. Another crisis, groaned Fern. Let's swing in, in the swing, said Avery. The children ran to the barn. Mr. Zuckerman had the sw best swing in the country. It was, was a single long piece of heavy rope tied to the beam of the doorway. At the bottom end of the rope was a fat knot to sit on. It was arranged so that you could swing without being pushed. You climbed a ladder to the hay loft. Then holding the rope, you stood at the edge and de looking, looked down and were scared and dizzy. Then you straddled the knot so that it acted as a seat. Then you got up all your nerve, took a deep breath and jumped. For a second, you seemed to be falling to the barn floor far below. But then suddenly the rope will begin to catch you and you would sail through the barn door going a mile a minute with the wind whistling in your eyes and ears and hair. Then you would zoom up upward to, into the sky and look up to at the clouds and the rope would twist you, twist and you would twist and turn with the rope. Then you would drop down, 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 out of the sky and come sailing back into the barn, almost into the hay hayloft. Then sail out again, not quite as far this time, then in, in again, not quite so high, then out again, then again, then out, then in, and then you jump off and fall down and let somebody else try it. Mothers from my, for miles around worried about Zuckerman's swing. They feared some child would fall off, but no child ever did. Children always, almost always hang in onto their things tighter than their parents think they will. Avery put the frog in his pocket and climbed to the hayloft. 
the t last time I swang in this swing, I almost got crashed into the into a barn swallow. He yelled, "Take that frog out!" ordered Fern. Avery straddled the rope and jumped. He sailed out through the door, frog and all, and into the sky, frog and all. Then he sailed back into the barn. Your tongue is purple, screamed Fern. So is yours, cried Avery, sailing out again with the frog. I have hay inside my dress. It itches, called Fern. Scratch it, yelled Avery as he sailed back. It's my turn, said Fern. Jump off. Fern's gotten the itch, sang Avery. When he jumped off, he threw the swing up to his sister. She shut her eyes tight and jumped. She felt the dizzy drop, then she, the supporting lift of the swing. When she opened her eyes, she was looking up into the door, the blue sky, and was about to fly back through the door. They took turns for an hour. When the ch children grew tired of swinging, they went down toward the pasture and picked wild raspberries and ate them. Their tongues turned from purple to red. Fern bit into a blue uh, a raspberry that had a bad tasting bug inside it and got discouraged. Avery found an uh, empty candy box and put his frog inside in it. The frog seemed tired after his morning in the swinging. The children walked slowly up toward the barn. They, too, were tired and hardly had enough energy to rock. Let's build a tree house, suggested Avery. I want to live in a tree with my frog. I'm going to visit Wilbur, Fern announced. They climbed the fence into the lane and walked lazily toward the pig pen. Wilbur heard them coming and got up. Avery noticed the spider web and coming closer, he saw Charlotte. He, hey, look at that big spider, he said. It's tremendous. Leave it alone, commanded Fern. You've got a frog. It, isn't that enough? That's a fine spider, and I'm going to capture it, said Avery. He took the cover of the candy box. Then he picked up a stick. I'm going to knock that old spider into this box, he said. Wilbur's heart almost stopped when he saw what was going on. This might be the end of Charlotte if the boy succeeded to catch her. You stop it, Avery, cried Fern. Avery put on leg, put one leg over the fence of the pig, pig pen. He was just about to raise his stick to hit Charlotte when he, was, when he lost his balance. He swayed and toppled and landed on the edge of Wilbur's trough. The trough, trough hit, tipped up and then came down with a slap. The goose egg was right underneath. There was a dull, expl dull exp explosion as the egg broke and then a horrible smell. Fern screamed. Avery jumped to his feet. The air was filled with the terrible gases and smells from the rotten egg. Templeton, who had been resting in his home, scu scuttled away uh, into the barn. Good night, screamed Avery. Good night. What a stink. Let's get out of here. Fern was crying. She held her nose and ran toward the house. Avery ran after her, holding his nose. Charlotte felt greatly relieved seeing him go. It had been a narrow escape. Later on the, in that morning, the animals came up from the pasture. The sheep, the lambs, the gander, the goose, and the seven gooselings. There were many complaints about the awful smell, and Wilbur had to tell the story over and over again of how the arable boy had tried to capture Charlotte and how the smell of the broken egg drove him away just in time. It was that rotten goose egg that saved Charlotte's life, said Wilbur. The goose was proud of her share in the, in the adventure. I'm delighted that the egg never hatched, she gabbled. D Templeton, of course, was miserable over the loss of his beloved egg, but he couldn't resist boasting. It pays to save things, he said in his surely voice. A rat never knows what's, when something is going to come in hand like handy. I never throw it, any things away. Well, said one of the lambs, this whole business is well as is 
all well and good for Charlotte. But what about the rest of us? The, the smell is unbearable. Who wants to live in a barn that is perfumed with rotten egg? Don't worry, you'll get used to it, said Templeton. He sat up and pulled wisely at, at his long whiskers, then crept away to pay a visit to the dump. When Lurvy showed up at lunchtime, carrying a pail of food for the Wilbur, he stopped short a few paces from the pig pen. He sniffed the air and made a face. What in thunder, he said, setting the pail down. He picked up the stick that Avery had dropped and pried the trough up. Rat, he said. Phew! I might have no, known a rat would make a nest under his, this trough. How I hate a rat. And Lurvy dragged Wilbur's trough across the yard and kicked some dirt into the rat's nest, burying the broken egg and all of Templeton's other possessions. Then he picked up the pail. Wilbur stood in the trough, drooling with hunger. Lurvy poured. The slops ran creamily down around the pig's eyes and ears. Wilbur grunted. He gulped and sucked and sucked and gulped making swishing and swooshing noises, anxious to get everything at once. It was a delicious meal. S skim milk, wheating, wheat mil milding, leftover pancakes, half a donut, the rind of a summer squash, two pieces of stale toast, a third of a ginger snap, a fishtail, one orange peel, several noodles from a noodle soup, the sc scum of a cup of cocoa, an ancient jelly roll, a stri strip of paper from the lining of the garbage pail, and a spoonful of raspberry jelly. Wilbur had ate hurt heartily. He planned to have leave half a noodle and a few drops of milk for Templeton. Then he remembered that the rat had been useful in saving Charlotte's life and that Charlotte was trying to save his life so he left a whole noodle instead of a half. Now that the br broken egg was buried the air cleared and the barn smelled good again. The afternoon passed and evening came. Shadows lengthened. The cool and kindly breath of evening entered through the doors and the windows. Astride her web Charlotte sat moodily, eating a horse fly and thinking about the future. After a while, she bestirred herself. She descended to the center of the web, and there she began to cut some of her lines. She worked slowly but steadily while the other creatures drowsed. None of the others, not even the goose, noticed that she was at work. Deep in his soft bed, Wilbur snoozed. Over in their favorite corner, the gooselings whistled a, a night song. Charlotte tore quite a section out of her web, leaving an open space in the middle. Then she started weaving something to take the place of the thread she had removed. When Templeton got back from the dump around midnight, the spider was still at work.